Hey guys, it's Green Zephyr. A little over, well, about a month ago, I watched um, Jurassic World Dominion in theaters, and I figured it was time to do a re-ranking video of the Jurassic Park films and Jurassic World films. So now I'm going to rank these in the order um, that I like them in, from worst to best. And keep in mind, just because it's in last place uh, doesn't mean... Um, I hated it. It just means it's not as good as obviously what's in first. Um, so we're going to go through these here. So number seven, The Lost World Jurassic Park. There's really not much to say here. I mean, it's a bad movie, but number six, Jurassic Park. So I didn't hate the movie. I didn't love it, but certainly... Um, Jurassic World is better, and I'm not going to spend too much time on these because I've already talked about them in the other video that was published, I don't know, like a month and a half ago, sometime like that. I don't know, something. Um, anyway, it was fine. The plot was fine. T-Rex was cool. Uh, but, and especially with the other Jurassic Park films, T-Rex had been done. That's why they needed to have a different villain than the T-Rex. And... Jurassic Park was n nostalgic and everything because uh, it's like really the first time it was done like that good and high quality and everything. So I'm not saying it was a bad movie, but it certainly was not the best out of the um, out of all the films. In fact, I didn't like it that much compared to most of the others. Number five, Jurassic Park three. Like I was saying earlier, the T-Rex was getting boring, so they added Spinosaurus, and that was the right decision because Spinosaurus really spiced up the film and made it way cooler. Then we had the addition of the Pteranodons attacking people, um, really in like, uh, for the first time in like a more, I don't know, scarier scale. Of course, Jurassic World got even more in depth with that, with tons of Pteranodon attacks as they're actually like flying around and swooping down and taking people. Um... But anyway, and yeah, the Spinosaurus was a great addition to the movie. It was um, honestly what they needed here to make it different instead of just a third movie with a T-Rex. Um, however, it killed the T-Rex in the beginning way too easily. T-Rex always wins a fight and it wins in a fight against Spinosaurus because Spinosaurus wasn't like adapted to killing dinosaurs. And it was now known that it was fully aquatic and T-Rex would just easily be able to snap its neck with a single bite. And I don't get in the movies, like in Jurassic World and stuff, why the T-Rex always lets go of like Giganotosaurus's neck, um, Indominus Rex's neck. It should just take one bite, crunch down all the way, and that it's just dead. But T-Rex lets go, so I don't know what Rexy's problem with that is, but yeah. Um, anyway, number four, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. While the plot made no sense, I still enjoyed the movie. I liked it a lot. There were some hilarious scenes. Um, my biggest video is um, thanks to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, and that is the Stygimolic scene. Um, I really love that scene. That's like um, probably my favorite scene in any movie just because it's like so, like I don't know, well put together and funny, and it's just like absolute chaos. It's like I love that scene so much. Um, that's why I love Fallen Kingdom because just it had good scenes like that. It also. Uh, well, we had the Indoraptor as a um, new hybrid, um, which was cool to see another hybrid. The There was a deleted plot line that would have had a second Indoraptor um, that was white, which um, it, you may not know it. Um, you may not have known, but that is the reason that Indoraptor Gen 2 exists in Jurassic World Alive and Jurassic World The Game, um, because it was originally planned for the movie. But they scrapped it, and they were going to have the black Indoraptor kill the white Indoraptor. Um, but anyway, so what actually happened in the movie, we had, um, it was like an exciting movie, you know, like it was, it was thrilling, it was action packed, the unrealistic thing, even, well, and keep this in mind, they're not, like Jurassic Park, people like it, like one of the reasons people say it's better in Jurassic World is because it's more realistic, like, oh, they can't create hybrids, um, but keep this in mind, the Jurassic World movies aren't meant to be realistic, they're thrillers. And also keep this in mind, um, up until recently, we haven't even been able to bring anything back past 50,000 years. I mean, there's been some successful trials um, with bringing some animals back to life from extinction. However, they almost 
all died immediately uh, within like 10 minutes or something. Although I think we actually brought some back. Um, I know there's like some goat that was brought back and it died fast. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, we don't have the capability to bring dinosaurs back to life currently. And if we did, well, we should not. It's not worth it. And yeah, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, the thing in the movie, there is no reason to save any of the dinosaurs on the island because there were six other islands with dinosaurs on them. So when one goes kablooey, it doesn't make sense to save the dinosaurs. However, that is justified in the plot because they wanted to sell them instead of um, actually saving them because, yeah, they just capitalize on the fact that they're dying. Like, huh, we can sell these. So that is the only reason the plot makes sense. Otherwise, it would not because, yes, there are six other islands, um, all of which have dinosaurs on them. So just because one was blowing up, it didn't mean they had to save the dinosaurs on it. And also keep this in mind, the entire island is not destroyed. The volcano is on the far side of the island, so everything on the opposite side, um, to an extent, is still alive. There would be some of the island still left that wasn't, like, torched. Number three, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. So the show was really awesome. Uh, season five is coming out in a few days, and I'm like looking forward to that a whole lot. It's gonna it's gonna be awesome, um, and uh, I think there was like a squid in the um, trailer. I couldn't tell for sure. That would be cool if it was Tusa Toothus or something. Um, you know, giant squid species. But yeah, that'd be cool. Um, but anyway, the show is like, it introduced Scorpius Rex, which was cool, a, a new unpredictable hybrid, um, and I'm like, I'm pro hybrid here, P tons of people hate hybrids and think it's unrealistic, but once again, Jurassic World's not trying to be realistic, so they shouldn't have a problem with it being realistic or not, because it's literally a movie made to be like a thriller that like, takes you away from the real world to an experience like, where you get to see things that aren't possible yet so I don't know why people have a problem with the realisticness of it because if they were trying to be more realistic then all the dinosaurs would have feathers or at least all the ones that were supposed to and they even were going to add feathers to the raptors in um, Jurassic World 1 but they decided not to because it would have been too much work with the animatronics same thing what happened this time for Dominion where they originally were going to not give Pyroraptor feathers but they because they're having so much trouble trying to um, figure out how to get the feathers to work on the actual uh, model. So they had trouble with that, and they're like, oh, crap. And then, But they, they found a way to make it work, and so we got Pyroraptor with feathers, which is good because it looked awesome. Um, but anyway, so Camp Cretaceous, um, we have in the new season with dinosaurs basically being controlled... Um, with like the same thing, kind of like with the Indoraptor and the Atrociraptors. And um, it shows how Bumpy and Toro were brought off the island, and they both showed up in Jurassic World Dominion. Um, Bumpy was at the very end, and then Toro was like fighting the Allosaurus. Um, but anyway, and the whole aspect um, of adding in a second dinosaur that bonded with a human, Bumpy bonding with Ben... Um, I thought that was really awesome. I don't know why so many people have a problem with um, dinosaurs bonding with humans because, like, even the bond with Blue, I mean, first of all, the outright say Blue is smarter than all the other Velociraptors, and that's why she's capable of bonding and um, having affection um, for Owen. Um, but anyway, uh, and then we have um, the fact that other animals alive today can bond with humans like even crocodiles adult crocodiles are capable of bonding with a human there is one that was shot in the eye and by poachers and then rescued and it bonded with a um with the person who saved it even though it was fully grown and like i don't know at least 15 feet long i don't know the exact size but it was it was completely fully grown and then we have even snakes you can find videos on youtube or wherever else of king cobras black mambas you know, you name it, venomous snakes being held by people without a snake hook, just slithering in the people's arms, not like getting aggressive or anything. They're just being petted and chilling and even letting the humans be around their babies. Like it's just, they 
they can be tame. It's possible to tame pretty much any animal. Um, there's still a few that you cannot. But then there's also the aspect with like um, blue ringed octopus. They say don't touch it. Well, yeah, that's because people grab it and get bit. If you let it crawl in your hand, you know, it's an octopus. It's not going to attack you. It has no need to. It's curious and just like all octopuses so it's going to explore you let it climb on you or let it crawl in your hand it doesn't feel threatened but as soon as you start to close your hand around it or reach for it that's when it gets upset and it bites you same thing with spiders you could hold a black widow with your hand held out open and it has no reason to bite you unless you're getting a little too handsy with it and poking it but that's just how it is for these animals um but yeah, it's totally realistic that a dinosaur could bond with a human, especially um, a raptor, because they're intelligent. Like, the more intelligent an animal is, the easier it can form a bond. Number two, Jurassic World Dominion. So honestly, I would tie this with uh, the one in first place, which by default has to be Jurassic World 1, because that's the only one left. Um, honestly, I would tie them because uh, I enjoy them both equally. Um, Jurassic World Dominion had funny moments that I really laughed at. It was really hilarious when Owen put the Dilophosaurus into a chokehold. And then, um, uh, when Owen started stabbing the, um, Giganotosaurus in the head with his knife a whole bunch of times, that was kind of funny. Um, because, yeah, it just didn't do much. He's just stabbing it repeatedly, and it just doesn't even care. Then when it got tased in the eye, um, but yeah. Uh, and then the final battle where once again Rexy should not let go of the Giganotosaurus. That was like almost a fatal flaw. But then Therizinosaurus comes in here and like just goes crazy. And yeah, T-Rex just impales the Giganotosaurus on the Therizinosaurus's claws. And yeah, that was really, I was like, oh, when that happened, I was like, so, um, I don't know what the word is, but just like, it was awesome to see. Like it was, it was kind of funny, um, the way it died. Just stabbed through the neck and the back. Um, and yeah, it was it was really cool. But they kind of wasted Giganotosaurus just based on the fact that it didn't eat a single person. And in fact, the only thing it ate, the, well, the only thing it killed the entire time was a burnt locust that it happened to eat as it was falling to the ground. Like it didn't even get to kill the goat. Therizinosaurus did that. And I guess the same thing with um, Camp Cretaceous. People had a problem with Spinosaurus not killing anyone um, except for the uh, smile it on but Spinosaurus wasn't going to get to kill anyone I don't know what you expected because when there's six characters on the island and they're all main characters none of them are going to die so it totally made sense that the Spinosaurus wasn't going to kill anyone however it would have been better if it destroyed the indestructible robot because that would have been um, I don't know even better and that would have been hilarious once again so if we added those into Jurassic World Dominion, I would like, I would be, go, uh, that would be hilarious if we had those in the movie. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to, I wouldn't know what to say if I saw that in the movie. Just like the indestructible Brads running around, just like shooting things, rocket launchers. That'd be hilarious. They wouldn't even need the real dinosaurs to be chasing Owen and Claire because they could just have the Brads do it. But, you know. And number one, Jurassic World one so i like this the best out of all of the jurassic park and jurassic world movies and also notice how all four jurassic worlds are in front of all three jurassic parks um but anyway i prefer jurassic world over jurassic park uh jurassic world has the best um dinosaur villain out of any of them with the indominus rex being um literally the untamable king and it is the ultimate killing machine it outsmarted everybody it marked the claws um like it dug into the um paddock walls so that they thought it would escape then it um broke out using its intelligence it was that smart it can camouflage it can um cut off its body heat it's like totally um unpredictable it even ripped out its tracking device to set a trap for people like that's just you know that's awesome it was the ultimate villain and then Rexy and the raptors couldn't even take it out. It took a Mosasaurus taking it. And if the Mosasaurus hadn't have come in and grabbed the Indominus Rex, who knows if the T-Rex and raptors could have taken it out. The Indominus was just too powerful. Like, it was hit with rockets and missiles and machine gun fire. 
and it literally had building parts sticking out of it in the very end when Rexy slammed it into multiple buildings. And it was just, yeah, the ultimate villain. Um, I loved that about it. And it also showcased the Pteranodons and Dimorphodons, like, brutally attacking everyone and picking them up and mauling them. Um, and, of course, Rexy didn't get to kill any humans in that movie, but Rexy didn't need to. And I guess, um, since I remembered, we'll talk about the other thing. Claire outrunning the T-Rex, which um, is, you know, pretty much anyone can outrun a T-Rex. Jurassic Park lied on that part because T-Rexes could, in fact, not run. T-Rexes could not go 25 miles per hour or catch up to a speeding Jeep. T-Rexes could not catch up to a running human. T-Rexes were very sucky at running. They were so, like, heavily built that their bones were so weak from like, they weren't able to run. Like, they could jog, but if they went into a full-on run, it they couldn't keep it up for long at all. Their bones had so much stress on them. They um, could walk at a minimum of, like, two miles per hour and a maximum of five miles per hour. And assuming you can run, you can outrun a T-Rex. There's a reason that they showed the T-Rex being slower in Jurassic World, and that was because they just weren't built to run, and, of course, they needed Claire to outrun it. And also, keep in mind that Rexy is old at this point. Um, T-Rexes don't live forever. Uh, and the yes, it was kind of um, dumb how Claire was running in high heels because that takes some serious skill. But like, as long as they didn't break, she was A-OK -okay to outrun the T-Rex. That was totally possible. And then, of course, the concept with raptors bonding with humans, um, even though they still, you know, they, they still killed people. They weren't like... You know, it's like same thing with crocodiles. You can have a pet crocodile and it can respect you, but it's you give it a chance and it can still kill someone. It's still a killing machine. So like same thing with the raptors. Um, sure, they've been somewhat domesticated, but they, you know, they just they respect you, but they can still certainly kill you if they want to. And in Dominion, Blue lashed out and like scratched Owen. Um, and then, of course, while Owen and Claire were away, what do you think Blue was doing? Blue was killing humans, because why wouldn't she? Humans took her baby, so it made perfect sense that she'd go out and kill more humans. So it's honestly kind of surprising no one shot her and killed her while she was just murdering people. But whatever. But yeah, raptors bonding with humans is totally believable. It's not unrealistic. People are just upset the raptors didn't have such a big um, part in um, like taking out humans like in the first three Jurassic Parks, because... Um, in the Jurassic Park movies, um, the raptors were like a big, like, um, antagonist, um, taking out humans and eating them. Whereas in the Jurassic World movies, well, in the first one, the raptors killed some people, but then in the, um, second, sure, Blue killed people, but they're down to one raptor and Blue doesn't really have, you know, it's just not as much of a chance to kill someone because, um, just the way the movie played out in, in Dominion, Blue doesn't kill anyone on screen, although it would have been funnier if she got to kill, um, Rain Delacour or one of her men, like if Owen brought her to Malta or something like that, that'd be hilarious, and if Blue could kill a, a trosser after, that'd be cool too, um, but yeah, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the Jurassic World movies. Jurassic Park, not so much. Of course, Jurassic Park 3, Maybe the film I've watched the most out of all of them because I just loved that movie so much. Um, the Spinosaurus was just so cool. I, I was obsessed with it when I was younger. So I would just like over and over watch Jurassic Park 3. And then Jurassic World was announced and I didn't know if I even wanted to see it since I didn't like the Jurassic Park movies too much other than the third one. Uh, but once I went to theaters and watched it, I absolutely enjoyed it. I was um, sad I even thought about not wanting to see it because I loved it, and now it's my favorite movie out of every movie that's ever came out. And I just really love Jurassic World. Um, and I hope that more people do in the future, too, instead of hating on Dominion and hating on Fallen Kingdom. I just wish more people would appreciate the movies, because they were still good movies. Even if the plot didn't always make sense, they were still good movies. And I just hope everyone... And feel the same way and enjoy them like I did. And anyway, um, that is it for the video. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and peace out.